Can't stand still cause the world will move without you. <laughs> What's up, this is Devon Trish with Team Motivation TV, and today we have a special guest. You know, I'm just going to go right into the intro. Check it out. Grab Michael Jordan. North, Carolina. Mission Control, ready for launch. Champion, winner. Jordan on the drive, falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. An unbelievable ball, he put it in and it goes! Oh, here comes Mr. Jordan is right. To describe MJ. And a shot on Elo. One word would be greatness. A spectacular move! Holy cow! Look at the air, look at the hang tie, look at the flying motion. Is it the shoes? No, Mark. Michael falls, fire. Yeah! That's it again! I would describe Michael Jordan as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. The balls of the world champs again! That's right, MJ is in the building, and we talking with him today. Let's just jump right into it. Mike, thank you for coming in and joining Team Motivation TV. Um, I just want to start off by saying, I know back in the day, a lot of people don't probably remember your your first uh, nickname coming into the league was Captain Marvel. And I take you didn't like the name too well because it didn't stick around. Michael Jordan came down, turned into Captain Marvel again. It just didn't seem right. Captain sounds like I'm in top of the league, and I consider myself bottom, you know, at that time. I'm walking into an you know, arena playing against the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and you call out Captain Marvel. <laughs> Puts a big dot on my back. No, you got to come up with <laughs> no. Yeah, I can see how that can be a, a, a huge problem. Mike, what has changed the most in the league uh, from the days when you were playing and today? Now, when I first got in the league, there's a lot of tough guys, at least from my perspective, because I, once again, I considered myself the lowest on the totem pole, and I had to learn. You know, so I looked at every experience as a learning experience. Um, physically, it was a much more physical game than than what it is today. You know, uh, you couldn't walk across the lane without getting checked. You know, or the, the screens. You know, illegal screens holding. You always had to pay a price. You know, be it if you were aggressive and you were a gun hole guy and you go in. You go in with the understanding that I'm going to get hit, I'm going to pay the price, but you know that's part of the game. You know I'm not going to be afraid to go inside. Those are types of things that you know, these kids don't even have a clue of how uh, we had to grow up or how we had to play. Without a doubt, you are the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. Uh, tell us a little bit about your influences. The people that influenced my basketball skills uh, when I was growing up as I was watching the NBA, uh, Walter Davis. Uh, Dr. J, uh, David Thompson. Dr. J's style uh, it was something that I absolutely loved because of the way he can handle the basketball with his one hand. He can move the ball. You know, I had big hands. So in terms of being able to control the ball and uh, be creative with the ball with, uh, with your hands, to me that was, uh, that was intriguing because very few people have big hands. What's your view on trash talk on the court? Uh, I know growing up watching you play, I've seen you talk uh, talk your game to a lot of a lot of different players like Matthew Johnson and uh, Larry Bird. Um, do you feel like it, it boosts the competition? I only talk trash to people that I knew, my friends, Patrick Ewing, Bird, Magic, those type of guys. But um, I never talk trash to people that I didn't know or people I'm just meeting. And if they did, my game always did my talk, and I never say anything. So this can be something you probably you probably could print. You know, I'm playing in my uh, my camp against O.J. Mayo. He was a top high school kid coming out, and I didn't. I never met him first time. In front of my camp, he starts this thing about uh, you can't guard me, you can't do this. You know, I got my campus here, so obviously I can't really go where I want to go because of my camp. So I stop the camp, send the kids to, to bed. We go back to playing, and he starts his whole thing, you know, that you can't guard me, you can't do this. And then finally, I just let him, I said, look, dude, you, you, you may be the best high school player, but I'm the best player in the world. So from this point on, it's a lesson. And from that point on, it was a lesson. He never won a game. I posted him up. <laughs> I did everything. If I can ever show you that film, and if you can ever ask him that, ask him about the thing that happened at my camp. I don't consider that trash. I consider that fact. <laughs> You call it trash. 
Now, I got to ask you this question. I know that you are a competitor. Uh, in your prime, who are some of the players that you would love to play? If I was in my prime, who would I want to play one-on-one? Um, that list is very long. Start off with Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Kobe Bryant in his prime, LeBron in his prime, D-Wade in his prime, Melo. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't think I lose. <laughs> I agree. Now, so many players focus on offense only. What made you focus so much on defense uh, at the same level uh, as your offense? you got to be very competitive. You know, I think a lot of my defense is because of my competitive nature is that I don't want you to outscore me, you know, or I don't want you to score a certain number of points on me. Now, was it true that you and Gary Payton had some kind of feud going on on and off the court? Gary Payton and I had, to, had an interesting competitive, uh, you know, he's supposed to be the glove. And the media made a little bit of a splash, and then the next thing you know, we're playing against him in 95-96 for the playoffs. And the whole thing was Jordan against the glove. I mean, he, he was good at defending, you know, me to get the ball, but once I got the ball, I felt like I always had the advantage. So, you know, it wasn't really a problem to me. He's a Hall of Famer now. I think he's uh, very deserving of it. But we did have our battle. Well, there you have it. Thanks again to Michael Jordan for stopping by Team Motivation TV. Until next week, peace.